It's just overwhelming. They never stop coming. The only thing familiar is there are people here. They get food here, but it is, it is just completely confusing to them. We tend to be overcrowded all the time. I can tell you that I worked as a reporter in this market for almost 10 years, and I probably called this agency twice in 10 years because I had the mentality that this is where dogs go to die. Right now, this is a standard Monday. There are 17 open kennels. He has just got a shipment of 25 dogs. What the hell is he supposed to do? When will the journalists, when do they want to take a look at this problem? When do our elected officials want to take a look at this problem? Because it is a problem. As little as three years ago, anywhere from 80 to 100 animals were being put down every single day. As far as aggression is concerned, that comes from being in a shelter environment. They come from the streets, they're in a strange environment, they're around strange animals, they're around people that are constantly in their faces, and they can sometimes become aggressive. Uh, right now we're teetering right around the 900 mark as far as animals are concerned. We've seen upwards of 1,000, 1,100. I remember when I started we had 1,200 at one point. Um, that's not something that we want or can do. When the, the breeding in Maricopa County is disgusting and that we see the parent animals dumped here when the breeders are done with them, just dumped like trash. They have dogs in the backyard and they're just baby factories. Um, that's just adding to the overpopulation in the area. A lot of people think that because we're a government agency that we are fully funded by the county and that's not the case. It costs us $16 million a year to run this facility and we only get $750,000 from our taxpayers. When we're in a situation like we're in right now, we'll reach out to some of our partners in the area and tell them we need help. There's a lot of different animal welfare organizations out there that help us tremendously. We work with a group called the Arizona Animal Rescue Mission. So ARM was founded by Lisa Klimczak back in 2014. We became a non-traditional group. Um, what we ended up doing was saying, we're going to take our resources, our money, our time, and try and help out the county shelters. When you have an intake of over 30,000 animals a year, um, the, the, you know, the county shelter is gonna need all the help they can get. What we do is we tell the county, we're going to give you $10,000. Uh, and what we want is we want to sponsor the dogs that don't get a lot of attention. We want the big dogs, the dogs that have been here a while. We want people to know that those dogs are wonderful dogs too. So from our perspective, we tend to sponsor those dogs. Um, that, and we'll pay those fees. Any fees, ARM will take care of them. And what that does is it generates news stories, it generates um, excitement. People are excited to come see the dogs. When they hear about our overcrowding problem, you know, most people are kind-hearted. There's an emotional response to, hey, look, guys, we're out of room. What do you want us to do? It's the community shelter. Community, what do you want us to do? Um, so ARM, from our perspective, we're happy to sponsor those events because um, it generates the publicity that we need to get dogs out of here. When we do have these adoption events that our lobby is full, there's lines going around the building, dogs are living and not dying. One of the biggest accomplishments that we can tout is that almost 40,000 dogs come in and 95% of them find homes. That's almost unheard of in a government-run type of shelter. In order to be considered a no-kill shelter, you have to be at 80% and we've been at 95 for almost two years. Before, since we are a government agency, we were run by people that didn't really have animal welfare in their background. So for them, they were just trying to run the facility as a government agency. The county decided this is not a typical government agency. This is an agency that deals with living, breathing things. So we need to bring somebody who's an expert in those areas. I've been doing behavior work um, off and on since 1995 we do what we're calling behavior and enrichment. We do assessments um, of the dogs as best we can to see what we see right today, and then we try to help them be okay here. It's just a very difficult place for them, so we try to do things to help them cope.
Well, we do the drive-bys, so you know, somebody's coming with some treats. We give them um, things to chew on. We have something called speed dating, which is they get out of their kennels to visit with a person. Some people can do walks when the weather is not dreadfully hot. Um, we do play groups. We have to do a really good job of keeping them kind of adoptable while they're here, and then everybody works feverishly to try to get them out. That is a very hopeful thing. I just think we can't overstate the value of the community helping us and the value of the commitment of the staff. We're really encouraging more volunteers. Volunteering is always necessary. And I used to drive by here on my work commute, and I used to feel ashamed every time I'd drive by here. i go, you probably could be volunteering there. You know, you probably could be doing something, you lazy piece of crap. And eventually that voice in my head got me to attend a volunteer orientation session. So there's opportunities to make an impact for these dogs. I wish more people knew it. If people could give up one Netflix episode a day and come walk dogs, if we had 50 people who could say, I'm gonna come walk dogs for an hour a week, we would, we would save so many dogs' lives. Just the chance that these dogs get to interact with humans and know that humans care about them and that they're not alone in this scary, loud, terrifying place. We've evolved together um, and they are, they are domestic animals that need to be in a home. Maricopa County has the opportunity to set the standard for the rest of the United States in terms of being a turnaround story. We're already on the way there. You know, we're already on the way there. The question is, how quickly will we turn around the story? And it's up to us as a community to decide.